can we build and launch a successful revenue generating product into the market with just these fair hands and this mind? And bearing in mind, I'm not a developer. I'm not sure if that is possible. However, if you see my previous video, I interviewed Kat, who is the founder of No Code Exits, which actually showcases many different times where people have in fact done this and they've sold those products and they've not been developers and they generate revenue and have had their own exits. So maybe it is possible, maybe I can do this. And in this series, we're gonna find out. This could go really badly or really well, we'll but we'll soon find out. So I cover things like how to make money online and things like that, and this is a key part of that. And as a non-developer and someone with a million ideas, no code is something that's really gonna help me. And if you don't know what no code is, it's pretty simple. It's tools that don't use code. Again, that's, that's pretty obvious. But no code tools have grown massively in the last few years to help people be able to create whatever they want to do, whether it's a website, an app, or whatever it might be, and launch it without having to have a developer or being able to develop themselves. And I wanted to find out, can I release a profitable product that obviously then generates me money every month and provides some value? So I was like, how, how can I think about this? How, first of all, you have to have an idea. But often people have ideas, but then they don't know what to do with it. So I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna test this and see if I can create a profitable product, launch it without being able to code. And so the tool I'm gonna be using, or the main tools that I'll be using are Bubble and Figma. Figma for my design, because I wanna design it and make it look, I would say good, but it's me doing it and I'm not a designer, so make it look like a product and not like I've done it on a, on a whiteboard, which I have done. And Bubble is a tool that allows you to do pretty much anything you want. It's a lot of drag and drop. You can connect lots of different APIs, lots of different plugins. There is a huge wealth of plugins that you can connect to now, different databases, everything like that. And there are so many tools and tutorials online that it means that you can do a lot of things without this whole kind of back knowledge of a developer that you'd need previously to make these things possible because I don't have those. I definitely do not have those. But I believe that I can generate a tool and a product that would rival those that are being created by a developer because the tools are that good now. If you want to check out either Figma or Bubble, you can check out the links in the description. It's realtalk.business forward slash bubble or realtalk.business forward slash Figma. And these are great tools for you guys if you want to create something and you're starting out and you just have no knowledge. There's so many tutorials online around both of these. And this won't be a tutorial, it's just following this journey of seeing if I can make a profitable product to inspire you guys to go out and do the same thing. Like, don't feel like you're stuck behind not being able to do something when I really wanna show that you can, anyone can. So let's get into the idea. When I was thinking, what could this product be? I thought about one thing that I love, and I love business model canvases. I love being able to validate or really flesh out an idea using a business model canvas. And if you don't know what business model canvas is, I'll put it up on the screen now and I'll maybe put it in the corner there. Business model canvas allows you in each section to fill out the different parts of your idea around your business model. And it starts with your value proposition in the middle. Value proposition is what your idea is. So I was like, okay, how can I create a tool around this? The benefit of these business model canvases is they help people come up with their ideas and the ideas that make sense. So they really can understand the value that they're providing for a user and a customer, what they're hoping to charge for it, what the costs are, where they're looking to market it, so in terms of their marketing channels, who their customers are, and putting them down into these sections really helps you as someone that's building something to be able to make sense of this all. When you're just like building stuff and often, myself included, guilty, you'll have an idea and you go, I'm just gonna build it. And the idea that we often have is the solution. We have a solution, but what value does that solution provide and why are we building it 
because if you don't understand the value it provides, you end up building this whole solution rather than focusing on the core values that you're trying to provide. So this business model canvas really helps structure an idea for anyone like you guys trying to build something. So I thought, I love these. How can I build a tool around this to support people? So that's my idea. I'm building a tool that has a GPT backend that helps people like you guys to be able to validate their ideas. So instead of just going ahead and building something, and if you just go off and build something without understanding all of these different parts of your business model and how you are trying to provide value, who you're marketing to, how you plan to reach them, all of these different things that are a part of the business model canvas, you put yourself under that much more risk and it's just a lot more chaotic. It's much more difficult to try and launch something if you don't have a true sense of all of these things that a business model canvas gives you. So I thought, that's my idea. That's what I'm gonna build. So of course, if I'm doing a business model canvas product, it would make sense to do a business model canvas on that product. I mean, ideally I would use my own product, but I haven't built it yet. So I need to do it the old fashioned way and put it on my favorite thing, the whiteboard. So if you haven't seen the business model canvas, this is what it would look like. And I am not gonna go through live and do it with you, but I will show you exactly what each bit is as I go through. So I'll fill out and we'll come back and I'll explain exactly what I have done. Right, so you can see I've scribbled madly onto this and I'm gonna take you through from the middle outwards because I think the value proposition is one of the key things that everyone should understand, etc., etc., etc. But you'll notice one specific thing. When I've done the value proposition, I have not started with the solution. I haven't put down what I am building because when you think of value proposition, it's the value that you're trying to provide. In fact, I haven't put anything in like solution wise until the end, which is a tool to build business model canvas with validation. But all of the things before that are the things that I think are more important. So more chance of successful product, reduce risk, reduce cost, reduce time, reduce stress. And then these are the positives. What do they increase? So increase success chances, better structure, better data, easier to follow with validation points, input from outside. And that's the AI part. You notice the only AI bit I've put in there, even though it's a GPT backend product, is there. That isn't my selling point. My selling point, my main selling point shouldn't be the AI. AI helps create a better product, but it isn't to the product and the value itself. So this is what I really wanted to stress here because that's kind of important and I see it so much. It's like this with AI but that's not the value the, the the ai can create value but what is the value that we're trying to create in the first place and these things the increase and the better and all of this sort of stuff are the points that people value the most because that's where we're kind of aimed so it's important when you do that because every time you build a product it helps you think about what you're trying to achieve in the first place not just building this product which is the business model canvas of validation does it do all of these things that's the main point that you should always ask yourself. Now I can whiz through the rest of them fairly easily because they're much more simple than trying to come up with your value proposition. The next we have customer relationship. What relationship would you like to have with your customer? And most of these things, because it's gonna be an online product, is gonna be self-service. So that means that one of the things I need to consider there if it is self-service is, is it intuitive enough that I don't need to give that white glove experience? Like what's the onboarding like? You know, what's the general like user or customer experience throughout the product? will it be good enough to make it self-service? So every time you write one of these, it allows you to think about what do I need to do to enable that to be the best it can be? And then channels, what are my channels? How am I gonna market this? How am I gonna reach my customers? And all of these are obviously assumptions. I don't know that these are gonna be true, but these are the things I'm gonna aim for and I have to test that. So I've got Twitter, YouTube, like you, Reddit, LinkedIn, Product Hunt. And then I've got some questions as well around Google, Google Ads, affiliates. Will they be good things to do? Like if you're interested in being an affiliate for this product, so like let me know because potentially that could be a thing. Or are there any other places where I think I could market this? So these, these could change all the time and these are things that I need to validate. But they're my current assumptions of where I think I will be marketing or trying to attempt to market my product. And then on to my customer. Who is my customer? Which is one of the things that you really need to try and understand. And again, these are all assumptions and these are the things I'm working on based on the value that I'm trying to provide. So I've got my customer down as 16 to 45. Is that true? I don't know. I don't want to discount anyone younger because they might not know how to launch something. 
have a lot of younger people that are trying to build their own future. So I'd love to cater to those guys as well. So I need to make sure it's intuitive enough for, for everyone from 16 to 45 or even older potentially. And then you've got looking to build a product or business it could be for the first, second or third time as a founder. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be fully for novices. It could be for people that just like that element of structure, but it, it then needs to cater for both novice and seasoned. And then it again, could be catered for novice or senior, but wanting a better structure, data, chance of success. So that's who I assume my customer is. But these, again, these are all assumptions. I haven't validated this in any way, so I can't tell you that that's truth yet. And then we'll move down to this side. And this side, again, is very simple because we look at our key partners at the end that our key partners to build this are gonna be Bubble, because that's the platform I'm using to, to create it and it'll be hosted on there at the same time, and OpenAI, because that's what I'm using for my GPT backend. And my key activities, and notice I've got marketing first, because that is a key activity. I can build this, but unless I tell anyone about it, there's literally no point in building it in the first place. Unless I'm trying to target these people and do something there and do some key activities, none of this matters. So marketing is your number one. And then development is my second. And development is no code, but I still have to develop something, a sort of creation of something. So that will be my second part. My key resources, again, super simple. I'm gonna be using, I'm, I'm myself a key resource because I need myself. Without myself, it wouldn't work. But I haven't put that in there because that's kind of an assumption. Everyone should know that. Key resources, OpenAI, Bubble, and Figma. They're the key resources I will be using. And then it comes down to costs. And I have looked into this. So I've gone done a bit of research to understand what it could cost per canvas per customer. And then that can dictate what you're gonna offer customers as well, like number of canvases that they can create, number of different options that they can do, et cetera, et cetera. And so for the base, base price per canvas, it should cost around 50 cents per user to run all of these different tests uh, and validate their business model canvas. And then I've got the hosting cost of $50 per month for Bubble. So that's, that's some base costs. And then more stuff might come out of there because I have, I have to pay Stripe, so I need to probably put that in there. I also have to pay um, for certain plugins on Bubble. I've already researched that, so I know that I have. So that, that I do need to build out on. But again, having that structure allows you to think about exactly what it's gonna cost per customer and how much you then need to charge or would like you hit your breaking even point to be able to be in profitability. And so then it comes into your revenue models. What are my revenue models? And I didn't want this, everyone aims for this subscription model and I get it because it's recurring revenue. You want that to be every single month. But the problem with that is everyone's just got subscription fatigue. You can't subscribe to every single SaaS product in the market. And does this really fit that model? Are people going to want to subscribe to this? More often or not, no, because it's a single use product. It's something that people want to do when they validate their business model. So subscribing to it, what, just to keep their data? Like, it doesn't make any sense. I don't like that model. As much as it would be great to have this recurring revenue and everyone would love to have X number of customers and they generate all this revenue every month and it's guaranteed unless they churn, et cetera, et cetera. This, for me, fits a one-time model. But the one-time model has three different pricing tiers that enables you as a user to be able to have a certain set of features or functionality within each tier. So you've got an entry level, medium tail, medium tier, and then like this, this top tier. Top tier that will give you access to everything always unlimited. And that's the way I would like to do it because then I can factor in exactly how much it costs, what I need to get back per user, and at the same time, it enables me to do some upsells as well. So I'm thinking about being able to do more within the product and charging either them changing subscription, or not subscription, but changing their pricing tier, their one-time fee, or they can pay a, another one-time fee just to use that particular feature. So having like in-app purchases, I suppose, that would be the best way to describe it. So that's the way I'm looking at thinking about it. Do I know the, the, the total that I'm gonna charge yet? I haven't fully worked that out. I, I've got some ideas, but I don't know. I think the entry tier of like 1498, everyone loves the number that ends in eight. That's an assumption that I'm gonna work on. So this is my idea mapped out. And I went through that incredibly quickly. So hopefully that was easy enough to understand. And you can see the value already in mapping this idea out onto a canvas because it makes you think more about these different things. Like for example, if I don't have access to Bubble or Bubble disappears, that's a problem for my product because it's built on it, but it's the chance of that are very slim. But my access to OpenAI, if I don't have that, what happens? 
I will have to find another error. Luckily, there are other options now. So it's, it helps you think about platform risk, which is another thing that people should always think about. What are your dependencies? What do you depend on to make your business work or your business idea work in the long run or just generally to keep it going? And so again, all of these are assumptions until we start to test to see whether they're working. But it gives you a full basis to say, all right, this is what I think. Let's go and try and build something. But let's first move to this to see what a product could look like. So let's jump to that. Once I went through my own business model canvas for my business model canvas, like some business model canvas inception, I moved to more of a, not necessarily design, but a user journey point of view for the product to understand exactly what funnel I wanted to use to understand where they started, where they went and how it would potentially be structured because then it helped me do this and then go from that into design. Now I wanted to put on the top validate your idea because validating it is one of the key parts about it and I also wanted to do right from the start of where people would start. So it's like what is the, the key hook in that sense? Like, so what value am I providing to make people think that this is going to be valuable to them? So waste your time on an idea, give your ideas the best chance of success, you know, do you want to make sure that you don't, exact, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like trying to play on some of the things where I feel that I am providing value against what I put in my value proposition, because I th feel that these things give you more of a chance of success and help you not waste time and resource, money, et cetera, et cetera. So there are the key things I put in my value proposition. So they're the things that I wanna play on as the entry point to my product. And then obviously it will go through to a pricing page. This is what you could do. This is the different options for different pricing, which again, haven't been validated, would need to be validated, and I've changed a lot of this since. And then it moves into what it would look like as a solution itself on a very lo-fi basis. And some, again, very low specifications. Low level, I mean, as in just, well, I suppose high level, they're just, there isn't much detail there, but just some ideas around what people would be able to do within the product. And then again, it's like how this would flow. So I like to try and use, I really love my whiteboard, but or just generally getting things down. So whether it's on a piece of paper or whatever, I like a whiteboard because it's big, but it really helps you understand where you're going from, what you want it to do. And then be it, once you have a sense of what you believe the product should do, you can then jump to the next stage, which we will do, which is jumping into Figma to then start some more, how should this look as a product? what will be called high fidelity designs. So we'll jump into that now. Right, so now we're jumping into Figma and you can see what I have already created in there. But Figma is so super easy to use. So for example, if you wanted to create a new frame, a new frame is what you're building. So for example, I'm gonna create a new frame here and I'm gonna pick the design. So I'm gonna pick a desktop. So this is my desktop frame right here. So then I go, okay, what do I wanna build on that? Or what do I wanna make it look like? I'm going to make a little sign up box just here, for example, in the middle. I'm going to make about that, and I'm actually going to have rounded corners. So I'm going to increase the round on those corners, make it like that. All right, job done. But then I need a couple of those. So I'm going to control C, control V. There we go. Job done. Look, we've got a little sign up thing. And so you can quite easily create your idea with the things that you have here. And again, there are so many different things that you can find online to help you design everything you want. So I've come up with my little pricing page and I think I'm gonna remove that because I don't like the image on it. I don't think you need that. I think that's superfluous to what you need. Um, I'm gonna put that in there so it's right at the top. And these are not the prices. Um, I'm not charging this, but I just put it in as a, a placeholder. And I'm again playing around with the copy, like what's the best copy that goes with what I was talking about as my value proposition. So how can I make sure that this says exactly what I need against my value proposition? So I'm gonna play around with this quite a bit. And so then you'd obviously have to have a login page as well where people wanna come back. So they would come in, pay for it, go in, and they'd get taken to the canvas itself. And so then you can get to the canvas. So I created a little canvas. So again, people can type in their text. You can select the different parts of the business model canvas you can edit it and when you edit it you type it in the, the bottom here but what i wanted as well is for the gpt dialogue to help guide people through it so it tells you what the value proposition is but instead of it just being 
my value proposition is a solution that does this, this, which everyone jumps to. We all jump to what the solution is. But if you type that in there, the GPT will come back and it will ask you questions based on what you've said to try and get a true sense of what your value proposition is in the first place. So to make sure it really understands what it is and also to make sure you understand what it is. That's kind of the key point there. And it will do that on all of these different ones and then you can get, get tests and it will then go to validate your business model. So it will say, here's, here's ways that you can validate what your business model is. So for example, it will say, you can you can pick mine for example, and I can't show you because it's not obviously working, but this is the design. But again, I think I want to try and clean this up a little bit, make it a bit more intuitive in the way it presents the data afterwards. So I'm still trying to think of uh, different ways to do that. But just from its basis on obviously a profile, so you have all the, and again, this is super basic. I haven't really done much, but it's just a super basic product at the moment. So that's the idea. So this is my product details. That's a, that's what I'm on. You can upgrade it, whatever, you can do your stuff. Easy, easy, easy. And I haven't quite finished that bit yet, but that's a super basic profile, super basic canvas, super basic tool. But that's kind of all I think I really need. And this again is really easy to use. So if you want to try, try Figma, it's free to use. So you can just use the basic one. Uh, it's, yeah, real talk dot business or stuff. Figma. Anyone can pick this up. You can come up with. You can even get templates from the community. So if you want to use templates and not have to build something yourself, you can do that. Or you can just build out these sorts of things you want really easily with your different boxes. And you can then prototype it as well. So for example, if I go into like uh, here, I think it might be. So I go okay. Let's play that. It will then take me to a prototype version of what it would look like if it was live. So it's like, okay, here's your live view of your live prototype, maybe. There we go. So you can see that's what it would look like on your screen. I can then, you know, get started, go through to that. So that's what you would experience or customers, users would experience as it gets on their screen. So I really like that. So we've set ourselves a clear objective and hypothesis. Can we build and launch a no code product into the market that is profitable? with no coding experience. That's what we want to achieve. We've come up with an idea. We've mapped that idea onto our own business model canvas. We have then looked at the customer journey and the funnel and what the low level design could look like from what the product offers. We've then jumped in to Figma to then start designing it to see what it would actually look like as a real product. And next and in the next video, we will jump into Bubble and start actually taking it from Figma and making it into a, a real thing and connect it up to stuff and stuff like that. And so that's my aim for the next one. And then we can test the product as well to see if it actually does what it says it does, especially against what we've set on the board in terms of our value for customers. Shocker, I've actually already built most of it in Bubble, but I can't cover that all in one video. But at the same time, in the next video, I really wanna show what we've put on our board for our business model canvas and the things that we want to, to provide as value for a customer and a user versus where we are with the solution to see if those things match up. And I think we've got some issues and I think that I could make it more aligned with those things. So that's the part where you can really hone in what that key value is to make sure that when you launch, you have the most success. And we could launch now and hope for the best and get feedback, or we could try and make it perfect. And everyone will always say, just launch fast and deal with it as you go. And I do think that being fast to market is really appropriate, but at the same time, I do think that trying to make sure that we do hit our core value proposition when we're launching is one thing that we should really consider. And so, Next week, we'll dive right into some of those things, some testing, some of the testing and validating of these things that I've already done to show you how this works from start to end. And if you're interested in really launching, building, releasing a product yourself and following this sort of journey, like I said, check out Bubble. You can do everything with Bubble, realtalk.business forward slash Bubble, just to show that you can literally do anything. And if you want to do some of this stuff and get some feedback, join my Discord, realtalk.business forward slash Discord. I love helping people go through these things as well. So if you've got an idea that you want to really build out, let me know. And like I said, if there's anyone that's interested in being an affiliate for this product, when it launches, just contact me as well, like comment or I don't know, whatever you want to do.
I hope you've enjoyed this video and following along this journey to try and prove, hopefully, that you can or anyone can build and release a potentially successful product into the market and you don't have to be a developer. Me and you, we can change our own lives. We don't have to be sat in an office every day. We can do that. Don't forget, if you do like it, make sure you share it with someone that who you think you can inspire with this sort of journey. Comment below, share the video with your nan if you like. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.